If you're just tuning in, we're discussing cybersecurity and online fraud, and we still have um, Olushola with us. Um, very shortly, I will bring in um, Aima, but quickly, Uti wanted to ask a question. Okay, so still keeping it um, local, we've addressed the fact that, or we've established the fact that awareness is an issue for people, and I like that you mentioned phishing. Um, I'd just like you as the expert to tell us what people should be looking out for, because we get a barrage of emails every day, mm -hmm. okay. and you have to be able to, so I am lucky to work for an organization that takes this very ser seriously. So from time to time, we'll get an email that is testing our ability to identify phishing, but that's because we've also been trained on what to look out for. So maybe you can just tell our viewers a couple of things they should be watching out for, because I know it says don't click on links, but you get some genuine links sometimes. So what mm -hmm. else could we be looking out for? And to add to that, I think you can answer it together. In terms of applications that we download, mm -hmm. do those also like pose a threat to our oh, accounts yeah. and to our devices? Okay. Um. Let me start with the application. So yes, the applications could pose a threat because somebody could have programmed that application and especially in the space of data privacy, sometimes you download an application and we usually don't read the, um, what do you call it? Yeah, uh, that policy, fine print, yeah, yeah, fine print, Exactly. Yeah. So it will tell you, um, I downloaded a shopping application once and it said you needed access to my camera, needed access to my email and SMS, needed uh, permission to be able to read, send, email and SMS. I was like, I just want to buy something online. Why do you need to send and receive uh, SMS and read all of that? So. We need to be able to read those things and be very careful, you know, what we're doing. Sometimes I just do a research online and read about the app and its privacy and maybe somebody has flagged it somewhere. So these are extra steps that we need to um, take. Mm -hmm. Now for the phishing email, um, there are some that are easy to identify. Um, you know, you have um, like juvenile people who try this thing. So the misspellings um, is the first step. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they will, you know, if your email address is timiobass at ways.com or something, uh, maybe the the O, they might replace it with a zero, zero yeah. or they might just put change something in, in, in it. But now there's another level to it. There's something called um, email spoofing. Email <laughs> spoofing oh, means... Wow. <laughs> Email spoofing means I can spoof an original email. Mm -hmm. So if um, somebody yeah. from Waze is sending me an email, like info at wazeafrica.com, I can send you an email that comes from info at wazeafrica.com. So it's proof like copy? Yeah, like copy. L letter so for letter. Letter for letter. So you would actually think it, it's a legitimate email. But now I'm just hoping you won't reply to the email. So I'm, going to direct, direct you to click on a link or download a file. Hmm. So, you know, what we advise people now is when you get this kind of mails that are prompting you to take an urgent action, or oh, your mailbox is full, we're going to delete this, yeah, click this, exactly, to reply. exactly. Take a chill calm pill. down, or, you know, um, like with business email compromise that we have now, or pay this amount into this account, calm, oh, you know, okay. contact the person, call the person. If I don't respond to that um, email, email Call the person and mm. say, did you send this? Mm. So uh, actually, that's the best okay. way to go about it. All right, so let me quickly bring in Aima. <laughs> She's been on hold. Aima Higo is extremely passionate about deepening the insurance penetration in Nigeria and is currently playing a crucial role in the development of several new products at Alliance Nigeria for the insurance market. Priority amongst them being cyber liability in recognition of its growing demand. And she's joined the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us, Ayama, to educate us on how to insure ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> so you've been listening to the conversation. Do you quickly want to add a few things before we just ask you a few questions? I mean, I think, you know, Mr. Olishola has really alluded to many of the things that, you know, that's on our minds. The only way to really protect your organization is through complying with, you know, best practices. And awareness is one of the main things. Employees are one of the great, greatest causes of cyber incidents in organizations. You know, so if, you know, once you're able to put that in priority, then, you know, many of your issues can be resolved, you know, prior to the cyber events happening. Okay, so um, I just want you to, I mean, we've talked about all the issues and we've talked about why mm -hmm. um, cybersecurity and cybercrime is a real issue. Now, I personally believe in insurance. I think why not transfer the risk to somebody else? <laughs> yes. So yeah. um, I'd just like you to tell Thank us you. a bit about um, cyber insurance and what it can really do um, to protect you, how you can transfer that liability to, um, to an insurance company. 
Okay. Um, th thanks, Siti. So like you said, you know, you want a product that really protects you. So you want your product to be robust. You want it to also, you know, be able to identify vulnerabilities in your systems and then look for ways to implement controls against those vulnerabilities. And that's what a, a proper cyber insurance product should really, you know, should really offer you. And at Alliance Nigeria, we have, you know, the backing of the Alliance Group to push that product to the local markets. You know, so for instance, our cyber insurance coverage, we have it under three, you know, main headings. There's the first party cover, which will protect, you know, the policyholder or the insured. There's a third party cover, which will protect the policyholder against claims made, you know, by third party against against them. And then there's a regulatory, you know, body cover as well. So it's, you know, our policy, our product is really, you know, it encompasses a wide range of, you know, possibilities that might happen. You know, first party, third party and regulatory, you know, cover. I can go in. I can go into it a bit if, if you like to hear. I'm like, no, I'm not. I said if you go into details, we'll send you a bill. But I, I just want to quickly add um, before we let you go that this insurance, since cybersecurity is almost like it is my vulnerability. I because from hearing um, what Olushola said, if I am not, if I'm not vulnerable. I mean, my mistake, yeah. um, I mean, nobody can, can maybe, um, what's it called, uh, defraud me or whatever online. Mm -hmm. So does it cover, even though that I'm at fault, that I cover, yeah. Okay, so um, firstly, our cyber liability program does not cover individuals personally. We, okay. You know, we cover institutions. Okay. You know, but yes, we do cover, you know, negligence. We do cover, because um, it's, it's, it's like a whole thing. So if an employee does make a mistake, or there's a deliberate act of an employee, it is covered because, you know, the company is the insured. Okay. You know, but it's really important, you know, when we're assessing, you know, companies that we want to give cover, that we understand their risk profile, you know, how much risk they're bringing to the insurance pool. So it's very important for us to identify where they are in their IT security, you know, their IT infrastructure, whether they are, you know, what kind of area of the industry do they participate in? Because if it's pharmaceuticals, you know, it's very high risk. If it's financial services, it's also very high risk. You know, so there, there are a bunch of factors that we need to consider in, you know, granting that coverage. You know, but I mean, people always say, people, people always, I think, underestimate, you know, how exposed they might be. But we always say, if you are on the internet, then don't expect, you know, privacy. It's, it's, it doesn't work like that. You know, so hi, Aima. You know, so I was saying to someone um, a couple of days back that even though I'm a financial services professional, right, I understand payments and, mm. you know, digital systems and all of that. When it comes to using my own card mm. online, I forget all my training and my experience. And I'm like, you know what? Uh -huh. I'm not using this card. Can I? Who has paper? You know, that kind of thing. So every time I'm going online, I want to be sure that my data is protected, my money and my privacy. So at some mm. point, will I be able to buy insurance from you guys to be able to, yeah, is this something you're looking at so that I can transfer that liability? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll pay the premium. I just want to be protected. Is that something you're looking at? Um, yes, you know, so it's cyber really, it's, it's the market is ready for it. Yes. And like I said, you know, we're still trying to, you know, go into the process of regulatory approval, trying to get people used to, you know, buying the product. So for now, you know, it's still going to be institutions, you know, protecting the, the data of their consumers. And you might obviously fall into that um, category. But as far as private individuals, we're, we're not, we're not there yet. We're not there. Oh, but oh. it's definitely something that I think, you know, will well, happen. I, I mean, some, some jurisdictions like Canada are already doing that. They're already offering, you know, cyber to private individuals. So I do expect that we would eventually get to that point, but we're just not there yet. Okay. It, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a good idea. It makes sense, but we're, we're not there yet. All right. Time. So we will come and send you your invoice. Thank you so much, Aima. <laughs> <laughs> we love having you on the show. I, it, it'll be interesting. Thank you so much, Thank Aima. You. So, but, but Shola, what do you think? Because if they're saying that... Um, SMEs are at risk. They are not big organizations. Mm -hmm. They are small businesses. And the impact is yes. very significant. And the, because for for the, I mean for for them to say that you know these companies that are not even thinking that oh no everybody is thinking okay financial companies when they are t talking cyber fraud and all of that these are small companies that would never have thought that they would be victims they would be targeted. Mm -hmm. So what do you think sh should be you know the immediate wins for them in terms of protecting themselves even before this because it's going to hit you know and we have a pool of SMEs in Nigeria. Yeah. So yeah. Well, 
I mean, like we've discussed earlier, um, I think over 70% of the attacks ha happen through phishing. Yeah. So that is the number one thing they need to be mindful of. Uh, um, you know, you need to train the staff, I mean, whoever operates the systems or whoever is behind the system, they need to make them aware. Awareness is, is key. That's, that's what it is, really. That's it. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Right, my children love to go on YouTube. They love to watch all those toy reviews. Mm -hmm. They love to watch a myriad of things. How can we protect these kids online? Because I saw a very disturbing <coughs> video. Um, was it last month? Um, a couple came on to say that um, they saw some. The video was being targeted. Targeted at their child. So when they were watching, they wouldn't. The see ad it. didn't come but up. When she but then was when the, I'm like, is somebody watching us? Like mm -hmm. sometimes so, my so husband is convinced. Because when you say, oh, hey Google. And it comes to my husband, he's like, somebody's watching you. How did Google do that? <laughs> you know, so like, how can we protect the kids online? Um, so, to be honest, it's, it's, it's very hard when it comes to um, child privacy online. Um, usually, the, there are a few settings, you know, in your browsers or, or in the computer that you can set, you know, age restriction, um, sensitivity, and things like that. You, you can do that on Google, you can do that on, on the browser, so that's even if they search for some things, um, the results would be clean, pretty much. But at the end of the day, you still need to talk to them and make them very much aware of, of um, these things. Because especially as they grow, and you know children are very curious, they will learn from other children. Um, when they start uh, joining social media platforms and things like that, they meet people. And that's the thing with the internet, it is so scary. Um, a, a 12 or 13 year old, um, Sarah can actually be a 40 year old but I share going somewhere. Ah. Yep. Exactly. I mean I it, saw the video. It, 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 it happens all the time. When I was doing my, my um, master's in Greenwich, there was um, this case because I studied forensics and system security and then they showed us how they embed um, photos inside photos. So I can send you the picture of a cat. If you see, you just see a nice cute cat. But in that picture I've put like 10 children, 10 little girls that I'm trying to sell to somebody mm -hmm. else. You know, it's called steganography. You know, you're hiding oh, it <laughs> inside a, a photo. So, you know, we need to educate the children and let them, I mean, from, I don't know how early we can start, as early as possible, yeah. and let them you know to be very careful. We also have to monitor them to a certain extent, I mean, wow. till we can let them fly and just be themselves. Hmm. So I was quite um, pleasantly surprised to see that we in Nigeria have a very robust, in my opinion, um, Cybercrime Act of 2015. Oh. Now, you see a lot of these breaches and you work in that space. How is it policed? Because it's one thing to have it on paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's another thing to actually enforce it. So my mind goes to a very recent breach um, in a financial institution, and I know there were reports in the media in the last sort of 24 hours that the person has been apprehended. So just to understand, really, is it working? Are we apprehending people? Are people paying those fines and being um, in prison based on what is in the act? How effective is it? So it is working, um, but then again, so sometimes we have a lot of incidents. A, a major problem that we have is we don't, um, we don't share, we don't collaborate. So I'm sure if you looked up, you tried to get statistics about the cyber crime in Nigeria, it'd be very hard for you to find relevant information on like, you know, in the UK, the US, you know, those countries you will see that, oh, Target was hit, Twitter was hit, you know, it's, it's out there. A lot of banks have been hit, but, but they, won't, they, let they won't let you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just trying yeah. to hide it. So mm -hmm. they won't even report it to, the one you're talking about now, the young man came out, did a video. He pretty much exposed, exposed himself. himself. Uh, yeah, so th things like that, yes, they will take it up. I mean, the EFCC will jump on it and then they will follow it. Okay, so the yeah. EFCC is the body, or is it, um, so in general, because it's a financial, financial crime, yeah, financial um, crime. so it will always be the EFCC. Yeah. Okay, just and I feel like in that. Nigeria, you know, sometimes your um, innovation is needs-based. Like sometimes you have to just evolve because you know this is where the pep. So in the US today, I think they're still using swipe cards. Yeah. You won't do that in Nigeria. Nigeria Nigeria is cheap and pain yeah. because yeah. you just die. You know. Know. So, <laughs> so sometimes you have to just you know, I, well, evolve. I was, was going to ask though, um, cyber crimes, is it only linked to financial crimes? 
you know, it's not linked only to no, financial. Mm, I don't think so. so even, even this data so, thing. Yeah. We're talking so about. It, when we talk about kidnapping, we talk about all of these things. Oh, it's all child embedded. Pornography. It. So, yeah. you know, so how do we even protect ourselves? You know, because I want us to go back quickly because we're ra we're, we're rounding off um, very shortly. How do we go back to like quick steps to take? You know, if somebody out there watching, you know, they are very good with posting on Instagram and telling you, okay, so what are the quick things, you know, you start to do now consciously, mm. you know, that would just protect you even you outside know. of your, um, outside of money, yeah. your physical health. Mm. Somebody will not trace you to Plus TV and come and kidnap you and start asking for ransom, yeah. you know, so how do we... Um, okay, so um, I think a few things I can say is uh, with social media, be very careful what you post okay. online. Uh, like they say, the internet never forgets. Uh, also, your settings, you need to check your privacy settings on your social media platforms. Um, if you use a, a laptop or a mobile device, those updates are actually very important because those updates usually plug vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. It's those vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Um, also, use um, strong passwords. Uh, don't use your dog's name. Try not to use your mother's maiden name. It's kind of like what your card pin. Mo I said it as an awareness session once. I said, I'm sure a lot of us use our year of birth for your card pin. So that's so easy. That's the first thing I would guess. I don't need to be a, a, a hacker per se. So um, yeah, these, these, these are the basic cyber hygiene that we need, we need to be, be mindful of. Uh, when you were talking, actually, something just popped into my head. You know Nigerians, we like tangible value for money. Mm -hmm. So just like you feel that insurance, we don't get anything back. <laughs> Antivirus software, yeah. it's not cheap. <laughs> no, <laughs> and I feel cheap. like, you know, every day I put on my laptop, something just pops up, you are safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then someday they just come, it, it has expired, expired. <laughs> it's red, pay. <laughs> and I don't want, I don't want to pay for. So like you said, because it, we are so used to, you know, tangible things. I mean, even in organizations, when the security professional tries to push and say, okay, we need to buy this tool, pay for this, no, nobody can understand. Why am I paying millions for antivirus? What is, what is a virus? Is it corona? I don't know. What <laughs> you know, but it is very necessary. I, I mean, I pay for my antivirus. Even my mobile phone has, uh, has antivirus on it because I know how, how bad it can be. I know the consequence, so uh, I mean, I would advise everybody to try and get. It's, it's not that expensive these days. I, uh, Have you looked at the exchange rate? <laughs> <laughs> don't look at antivirus. <laughs> so, someone is asking that how do we clean up the system in Nigeria in terms of, um, how's, he, how's he putting it? I'm trying to summarize because it's quite long. Mm. In terms of uh, people going to recruit young people now into cyber. Crimes, yeah, yeah. yes. Just yeah, quickly, yeah. Mm -hmm. how do we do that? In, how so, should you talk to parents, you know? So I don't think the solution is a technology <laughs> or a yeah, security solution. Now, so, like, so I mean, if they don't have jobs, yeah. if they can't go to school, then I mean, I, they, everybody has it's access to a smartphone system. or to a small, exactly, or, you know, a small laptop and can start doing crime and things yeah. like that. And, so, so and you're seeing the dividends yeah. from your... Exactly. So you don't have any advice on dividends. Value system. Well, I mean, buy their laptop. <laughs> 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 Yeah, don't you don't even have laptops because if you're saying that somebody is going around and recruiting it's them, it's yes, just it's exactly because it's just like abroad. They they put you on a street corner, they give you yeah. ten dollars worth of crack and you sell it, and you know. Yes. So it, how do we? Uh, it, to my mind, I think well, um, we educate, as he said. They need to have jobs. They need to have things to do. And we're a very young population. Mm. So if you can't find some idle hands, devil's workshop. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Okay. That's the truth. You've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Anushala. Quickly, you're tell welcome. Me, in one word. One Guys, minute. change your pen from your year of birth. <laughs> change it. <laughs> um, it's very easy to get scammed. Mm. It looks real. We have professionals. I've had colleagues who have fallen for emails that look like they've come from the organization. Yeah. The, every time I get an email, the first thing I do is I just hover on the email address to make sure that if it says info at Waze, it's it really is from info at Waze, at Waze and there isn't another email address embedded behind Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I think also um, it, most of these email companies like Gmail, Google, they've also helped us because now if you're trying to reset your password and you try to put a very easy work password, they, they don't even accept it mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. So because those are like security measures that they also have also put in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to rise above this. And um, do we see this number dec decreasing, cyber crime in Nigeria? Um, I, I, can't com I can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to off your mic? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you have off his mic. <laughs>
his mic is officially oh, off. <laughs> thank you so much, Alicia. And thank you, Aima. <laughs> we are coming to you for insurance, so you insure us you individual. So <laughs> All right, so please. We're here for you. Yeah, absolutely. So please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Waste Your Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, where's my quote again? Can you remember the quote? You remember the quote? I know. One single vulnerability <laughs> is all an attacker needs. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't beg <laughs> that vulnerability. <laughs> thank you, Tammy. <laughs> all right, so thank you, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow live as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. Bye. <laughs>